Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of times when I interview guys, I like to interview guys because they're great fighters and there's other guys I like to interview because they're great talkers. And then I got one today who is a great fighter and a great talker, Mr. Keith Thurman, the uh, WBA WBC welterweight champion. Hi Keith. How you doing? I am doing awesome. I appreciate you. I see you're getting ready to go into LA Fitness and, uh, and do a workout. Appreciate you taking time for exactly. me. I mean, no problem. Uh, how have things changed for you? You're a married man now. You uh, you haven't fought as a married man yet. So uh, <laughs> how, how is that going to be? Uh, you know, I mean, just more love and support, you know? I mean, uh, it's great, man. You know, um, she understands my dream. Um, and that I work really hard to be where I am. And that, you know, it's, it's what I do. It's my it's my job. It's, it's uh, necessary, you know? Um, whenever I'm in camp, uh, you know, I don't get to spend a lot of time with her, but we always do our FaceTime chats pretty much on a daily. Um, so it's all good. Uh, it's just different. You know, I'm uh, 29 years old now and life is just different. You know, you just go through the years. You always wonder as a kid what it's going to be like. I always wonder what it would be like when I was champion, what it would be like when I'm in my prime. And uh, here I am, you know, uh, 28, you know, 22 knockouts, the WBA super and the WBC welterweight champion of the world, man. So um, I'm just blessed and I'm just going to keep living this dream and see how far we can go. You know, Keith, I, I think people sometimes don't realize how difficult uh, the fight life is on the families. It's not just fight night with them sitting there watching you and, you know, they stress out over what happens in the ring, but it's all the other stuff, getting ready for the fights and, you know, your kind of your mood swings. Are you a moody guy? Or are you one of those guys that when you're in camp, you're, you're tense? You're, are you like, the, are you like a Marvin Hagler type guy? Uh, you know, it's, I do feel like I, I go through a more PMSing in camp than I do any other time in life, man. It's, it's the strenuous diet and exercise, you know? Um, it doesn't bother me that much in the beginning, but it's just at the end of camp when you've already been doing it for eight to 10 weeks. Um, the longest camp I ever had was, uh, I, I think 12 weeks. I said, I'm never going to do that again. That's unnecessary. So eight to 10 weeks, but, um, yeah, it, it, it gets to you, but you know, it just comes with the job a little bit. You know, we're used to stressing our bodies and um, demanding more of ourselves and out of our bodies than the average person. That's what it means to be a world-class athlete. Right. Um, but, but I enjoy it. You know, um, it might not on my face, it might not seem like I enjoy it, but ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be competing at the highest level of professional boxing. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, you, uh, your last two wins were over Sean Porter in 2016, one loss before he fought you. Uh, Danny Garcia last year, I think the combined record of those two was when you fought them was 59, one and one. So certainly you've been in there uh, with, with the best guys. Is it different when you're in with somebody like a Garcia, like a Thurman that you know is an elite fighter like yourself? And, you know, it, it, it's a fight that's a 50, 50 fight on paper going in. Is it, is the mindset different than it is when it's a guy that I don't want to say tune up, but you know, somebody you're expected to be, you know, the way I look at it, you know, is I always simplify things. And the way for me to simplify things is for me to go back to my amateur career. You know, the one thing that me, Danny Garcia, um, and Sean Porter all have in common was we were at the same national tournaments. Year after year after year, we were competing on the highest level of boxing at, on an amateur level right. before ever turning pro. And then, you know, it's just a little irony to be at the top professional level and see the same faces that I saw growing up in the sport of boxing, you know, but um, that just shows you what hard work and dedication does. Um, um, and, and, you know, staying true to what you, what you love to do and the, and the gifts that um, you're given in life. Um, but the way I look at it is Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, we were all bred for boxing. We were raised in boxing at such a young age, you know, you're not going to scare us. You're not going to intimidate us. Um, we're we're real fighters. We're we're the elite fighters. Um, the only thing I knew is that two men walk in the ring, one man walks out victorious, and I'm just going to box smart and do what I got to do to get the W. And I I did that for sure. So um, I, I that's, that's normally how I think at, about it. 
It's been 11 months uh, since you've been in the ring. I know you had elbow surgery. You got married uh, since your win over Garcia. That was a huge fight. Not only people were anticipating it, but it did great in the ratings on CBS, a, a massive rating. Do you feel like you lost momentum, Keith, because you haven't been back? I know it, it was unavoidable, but, I mean, the, the fact remains, you haven't fought. It'll be, what, 14 months when you do fight in between appearances. Did you lose a little momentum because, you know, people were into you and they had heard about you, and now all of a sudden you disappear for a long time? You know, I lost momentum as far as activity. Of course, people in the boxing world would have loved to see me um, be more active that year. But like you said, it was – we couldn't really avoid um, the surgery. If we could have, we would have, but we couldn't. So uh, I got put on the bench. But all in all, what I did that year was so significant that it actually doesn't affect me as much as some people might think. And the reason being is because by defeating Danny Garcia, I separated myself from the rest of my competition. I am currently the only unified champion in the Walter Waite division. And Though I haven't, uh, I haven't fought for 11 months, I still hold my titles. I still hold my ranking. So it's like, a, it's like a stock that doesn't go up, and it's like a stock that doesn't go down. After I beat Danny Garcia, I raised my stock, and it's just, it's just waiting to see what we're going to do next. Well, let me play devil's advocate because I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a lot of the fans say, you know, well, number one, out of sight, out of mind. But number two, you know, there's so many good fights at the welterweight division. I interviewed Terrence Crawford last week, and, you know, I was talking to him about this, you know, yourself and Garcia and Porter, but also Errol Spence, who I think is awesome. I think Errol Spence is one of the best fighters in the world. People want to see you guys fight each other and want to see all those fights happen. Um, and the fact that, you know, in the NFL, hey, we, we know there's a schedule. You're going to play this week. You're going to play this week. You're not going to be gone. People get that. Boxing doesn't have that. So how do we keep boxing at the forefront if you know the fight the top fighters aren't fighting on a three four time a year basis well at the end of the day um you know i brought you keith thurman versus sean porter i brought you keith thurman versus danny said garcia you know the big fights are happening when i'm stepping in the ring when i'm when i'm making these big fights happen you know if uh luckily danny signed the contract if danny and his father would have neglected then yeah we couldn't have made that fight happen at the time that we did and there's nothing that would have um, – there's no way of going around that because this isn't football. This isn't basketball. Either either these fighters agree to compete or we don't. The only thing that I am trying to let people know right now, people that demand a little bit more out of me right now, is this is, this is a comeback year. This is a get-back year. This elbow surgery set me back further than I wanted to be set back. Um, what was wrong with it? Not to interrupt you, but tell me what happened to your elbow. I had bone spurs. Long story short, I had bone spurs, um, loose bodies floating around in my um, joint uh, during the Danny Garcia fight. So, um, and in and in uh, the preparation for that training camp, I felt the pain in my elbow. I got an MRI, and the doctor said you're just going to continuously feel information. You can have one to two cortisone shots and get through the fight, but you're going to need surgery afterwards. And that's what we did. I told the doctors, get me through this fight. And um, then I'll do what needs to be done. Um, so, you know, when you got bone fragments floating around in your joint socket, I mean, you got to remove that. There's nothing else you can do. How did that limit you? Did it, you know, did you not punch as hard or did you not punch as often? Was there any specific limitation that it had in the ring that fans would have noticed if they had known? Um, you know, I was, I was committed to just putting myself out there one last day. This is my last 12 rounds before surgery. You know, I knew I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, so um, it was a little bit in the back of my mind that, you know, I can I can hurt myself on that night while trying to hurt him. But whatever whatever I suffer, I'll get through it. And I and, and I knew I would um, in the back of my mind. It might have made me just a tad bit timid, but not not a not a drastically uh, over timid or anything, you know, I was throwing the right hand and the right hand was one of the punches that was, uh, working in the fight. So I, I had to throw it. So this, this is what you call a get back here. You're going to fight May 19th, uh, in Brooklyn. There had been talk. It was going to be Jesse Vargas, but I guess Jesse is out right there. You're not fighting uh former champion, Jesse Vargas. There's, is a that lot, correct? there's a lot of, there's a lot of rumors when I'm not in town, giving interviews, a lot of rumors of it. 
<laughs> okay, so we'll see who you're going to fight. Um, but I get, you know, one of the things you you said after Errol Spence's fight, I see you, Errol Spence, we will fight. So I was encouraged by that. I think one of the best fights in boxing would be you against Errol Spence. Um, number one versus number two right now. I mean, of course the people want to see that. It's like seeing the Super Bowl. That's the beauty of mega fights is, is when world-class fighters step in the ring, it's almost like a Super Bowl. We don't, um, and it comes from all over the world. It's not just the East Coast, West Coast. We are, we're champions of the world. Um, it just so happens that Errol Spence is an American fighter, and I'm an American fighter. Um, but it's a great fight. You know, it's a great fight. I look forward to the competition. Uh, but, you know, another thing that I tell people is I just unified two titles, right? Errol just got his first world title. There's nothing wrong in me defending my unification and him defending the title he has and building up to a bigger, greater fight because I do see that as the big fight. That will be the big fight. Everyone's talking about it already this year, and it's not even going to happen this year. So that's the big fight. You know, my I guess one of the things, a disappointment I would have, Keith, when you say that is why not – September. Why not November in a fight when you you have your fight? He's planning to fight in June, so you each have another fight. You each defend your titles, and then bring that fight later this year, as opposed to because you know what Bob Arum termed the phrase marinate fights, and and the fight that he talked about when he used that. I don't know if you ever heard him say that, but when he used the phrase marinate, he was talking about Juan Manuel Lopez against Yuri Orcas Gamboa, and they never did fight. We lost that. Fight. And you never know what could happen. You had surgery. Who knows what happened to Earl or what may happen to you in the future. So why why make it wait as opposed to saying, hey, let's do it this year? Well, first things first is we really want to bounce back um, in a tremendous fashion. You know, um, we want to we want to just make sure that we're back completely. You know, I'm not even going to fight. I might not even fight anybody in the top 10 on my on my comeback fight. We'll have to see what we negotiate. But outside of that, if uh, the next fight, should it really be the number two guy? That's the, should it really be the number two guy? I can go after somebody from the top seven up, top five up, but should it be the number two guy? Um, and we can actually let it marinate. I don't. You know, what I like, I like using Errol's uh, nickname. I like I like the fact that he calls himself the truth. Because the truth is, if he's the truth, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> if he's the truth, he ain't going nowhere. I already established my position. I'm not going nowhere. So if he's the truth, he ain't going nowhere. There should be nothing y'all are worried about. You shouldn't be worried about none. He shouldn't be worried about none. I shouldn't be worried about none. Handle business. Put some money in the bank. We will give you guys a good fight later this year. It most likely will not be the Spence fight. But after that, going into the next year, after I performed twice this year, because another thing, to be honest with you, it's been several years since I performed two times in one year. All right. I had a car accident with Sean Porter. You know, Then I was negotiating the uh, Danny Garcia fight. He was having a tune-up. I told Al Heyman, I don't want a tune-up. I'm just going to wait for our date as long as it's early within the first quarter of next year, I'll be okay with that, with that date. I can just wait it out. And that's what I did. Um, so this year, I'd really just want to prove to myself that I can step back in the ring twice a year. I can be a little bit more active. Um, and then after that, me and my team will be open to negotiate any fight. Well, let, let's uh, a couple more questions, Keith, if you don't mind. Now, I talked to Terrence Crawford the other day. Of course, he's moving to welterweight probably going to fight Jeff Horn in his uh, first fight at welterweight. I asked him, I said, who do you think, excluding yourself, are the best welterweights in the world? And he said uh, he couldn't pick between you and uh, Spence, but he had you guys uh, one and two. And said he thought you hit harder, maybe he was a, a little bit better boxer. So I'll ask you the same question. Who, excluding yourself, are the two best welterweights in the world? And even though he hasn't fought there, yet, put Crawford in that list since he's now going to fight at welterweight. Yeah, you know, the thing about Crawford is you can put him in the top five, but you don't know where he belongs. You can just put him at number three, you know, Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, um, and then Terrence Crawford. You can do that if you want. But, um, you know, a lot of people, I believe in the Walter Wade division, believe that Crawford's going to have to prove himself, you know. And Jeff Horn is a nice 
it's going to be a nice welcoming party for him at 147. But, you know, I don't think a lot of Americans are thinking too highly of that kid right now anyways. You know, he's he's still just unexperienced. You know, Manny Pacquiao was old, and Manny Pacquiao was a small guy. Jeff Horn had a good size, fought hard, fought in his, his own uh, country, and he got the W. You know, some people say he lucked out, but it doesn't matter how you win. What matters is what the end result is. And he's champion. He should be proud. He worked hard for it. I don't want to take nothing away from the kid. But uh, we obviously favor uh, Crawford in the fight. And, um, you know, we look forward to, you know, Crawford mixing it up at 147. But there's a lot of great welterweights that Crawford could be fighting outside of the top uh, Walter Waits, which is Keith Thurman and Errol Spence. There is a lot of action at 147, and a lot of great action for all of us. A lot of young, hungry dogs out there. There, um, I want to ask you about the prior to the Danny Garcia fight. Danny's father, Angel Garcia, really got at a press conference. You know, kind of got nasty, and I, I was impressed by the way you handled yourself in that. And, and I wonder if you can go back and you remember, was it difficult to just stay calm and not kind of lose your cool because? You know, he was insulting you pretty bad, and I, I know it's hey, it's just words, but sometimes it gets it gets rough. Uh, how, how was that? Uh, you handled yourself in a classy manner. How difficult was it to do that? Oh, you know, uh, I just had to remind myself that it is just words, you know, and um, they were very uh, ignorant words coming out of an ignorant person, you know, um, or or at least somebody who has chosen the moment to behave in an ignorant fashion. You know, I'm not not declaring that his father is truly an ignorant person. Um, just in that moment, he was being ignorant. Um, and I was just able to acknowledge that within myself and understand that I didn't come, we weren't there today for that. That's not what we came there to do. We were, we were there to um, talk about the fight, promote the fight, you know. We can create a little bit of drama, that's no problem. But, you know, obviously my fight's with your son, not with you, right. you know, and and you're coming out of your lip way more than the son is. But the son has to put in the work. Yeah. You don't you don't do nothing. You're going to be sitting down while your son is is doing all the work that's coming out of your mouth. Right. You know, you're making it more difficult for Danny. And Danny's a great kid, you know. So so just, you know, just understanding where that, that's why I like the history, you know. I wasn't ever close to uh, Garcia. I was more close to uh, Kenny Porter and Sean Porter and uh, throughout my amateur career, especially my later years in the open division. But, um, but I still remember the kid. I still remember him competing in tournaments and fighting people like Saddam Ali and things of that nature. Um, so, you know, and, and only a few people, there's only a few people in boxing that actually saw me compete as an amateur. And what I, what I do today, I've been doing for a long time. I've been hurting people ever since I was 14, 15, 16 years old. I have confidence in that, you know. They can call me sometimes if they want, but still sometimes you're going to get hurt. Sometimes you're going to get knocked out. It doesn't matter how you want to change my name. This is still one time, all the time, KOs for life. I'll say all the time. I like it. You put you put on a show yeah. when you fight. And, hey, I want to get – there's two fights in March. I want to get your prediction because you're, you're good at breaking down fights. Um, Deontay Wilder fighting Luis Ortiz and Anthony Joshua fighting Joe Parker. In your opinion, who wins those? And then ultimately, who comes out of that heavyweight mess? Okay, so I heard the first fight, um, Deontay Wilder. Um, and Luis Ortiz. Yep, Luis, the Cuban, right? Correct. Luis Cuban. Yeah, um, you know, you know, I, I favor Deontay big. Um, you know, I know Ortiz is is tough uh, he's got a big punch you know he's gonna he's gonna come to fight but you know Deontay that that distance that they have to cover and the how many uh, bronze bombs that are gonna get dropped you know <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's not easy for them boys to take and his record definitely shows it you know um, you know and and I, what I would actually like to see out of Ortiz, to be honest, I would just like to see the man come in shape, you know? Um, heavyweights have a tendency to be lazy because they don't And really pass the drug weight. test. And pass the drug test. There you go, you know? So, you know, just, just come in shape, man. Come clean and put on a great fight, you know? I mean, it's an opportunity to become champion of the world. 
um, respect that opportunity um, and, 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 and just do your best, you know, but I, I, I favor my boy uh, Wilder in that fight. And then uh, what was the next match? Uh, Anthony Joshua and uh, Joe Parker. So that would be for three of the four heavyweight belts. They're fighting later in March in England. To be honest, I don't know anything about um, Parker, but uh, what, what's his style? A little, little, he's a big, uh, he's a big guy. Good, you know, good boxer, good jab. You know, not as big a puncher as uh, Anthony Joshua is for you know for sure. Uh, he, his last fight, he fought Huey Fury, kind of struggled a little bit. Okay, I mean, if he's a boxer type, you know, um, I think it can it can work against Joshua. I think Joshua. Um, I think he needs to get a little bit better conditioned himself. He, uh, when he beat Klitschko, I saw he won on his, uh, the second win, you know, he went, he went through a wave, then he diminished and then he rose back up to the Give credit for that, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and it was really apparent for anybody to see, not even a, not even a high IQ, um, boxing intellectual person, you know, could just see that he went through a wave of energy. And if he could sustain some of that energy a little bit longer than, you know, I think he'll be better and maybe he can um, close the show earlier. Um, but if he does go through that wave, that's an opportunity for the opponent to possibly steal some rounds, you know, and uh, and try to make it a competitive fight. But I do favor uh, Joshua. He's young. He's strong. He's got a good team behind him. And and he's still, you know, he still has many dreams that he wants to accomplish. And and that's the thing when you're when you're young and hungry, you know, it's not easy to stop you. So. I told you this guy could talk, Keith uh, Thurman. Keith, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll let you get to your work. I tell Dan Birmingham, I said hello, one of the best trainers in the world and one of the good guys in the world. Uh, all the best to you, man. Will do. It was a pleasure talking to you. Have a See great you, day. Thanks.